Okay, so in previous videos, I've covered three different Ymaxis screens and they've all been excellent. I would say overall, this is my favorite up until now. Uh, so this has got a USB-C socket on the side of it. And if I plug in uh, and plug in, well, I usually plug in a Samsung phone, which has got DeX on it. Uh, so there's nothing else plugged into the monitor and it can power up and we can start using it like a tablet, like a 14 inch tablet with this Samsung Galaxy S8. So you can see it's launching DeX and if I pop my phone down, I can use that as an operating system, as a touchscreen operating system and it works brilliantly. Uh, because I've done a few monitor reviews recently and I, I've shown DeX quite a few times, I thought I'd show something a bit different. Uh, so this is an Honor View 20 phone, uh, which didn't cost me very much at all. It's in perfect condition, and it's actually quite a lot more powerful than the Galaxy S8. So you can see here it comes up with wired projection and agree. So we're going to agree to that, and it comes up like a normal phone uh, on the display. Again, the phone is powering the display. I can use this uh, in touchscreen mode, and you can see it's working. But I can also switch it over to a desktop mode. Uh, and this has Magic Desktop, uh, which is something very similar to DeX. Uh, works in, in a very similar way. Although I found that not every app launches on it, but it is still, still pretty nice and pretty nice to use. So I said this is my favorite monitor until now, and that's because the newest one I've been sent I think is even more impressive. So let's just unplug this. Uh, one thing I do like about this, it's got a Visa mount on the back, so you've got four holes. And I'm going to 3D print a Raspberry Pi adapter to be able to put on the back of this to make it a really neat proposition. But if I open this up, this is all magnetic, so it all clips together and pops back into its nice case. The new monitor is this one. Uh, it's another 14-inch touchscreen monitor, but this comes with its own kickstand, and it's incredibly slim. And there's a few things uh, I haven't even... Well, I've literally just opened it just now to have a look. And... Uh, what I particularly liked about it, it's incredibly slim and it has this movable kickstand so you can basically move it to various different angles. It does fold all the way back up to here but I don't think there's any use in doing that. Uh, but if we have a look at the sides, we've got a headphone jack, we've got uh, a control like a rocker switch and an exit switch, exactly the same as the other one. Um, so you can control all the features and things of the monitor couple of USB-C's and an HDMI mini connection. But if I stand this up, do exactly the same as I just did with the other monitor. It's got a nice bit of rubber on the bottom, so uh, it really sort of stays in place. Uh, it's, it's nice and stable where it is. And if I plug the USB-C in, I'm guessing the same thing will happen. I haven't tried this yet. So again, I can agree to wired projection and it will come up. Magic Desktop has launched. And because this is more of a matte finish, uh, we don't get as much reflection as we get on the other one. Um, but it also, if I tap the rocker switch, I can change the mode, because the mode it normally comes up on uh, is, uh, is not as bright as it can be. So FPS is probably the brightest mode that it does. Uh, and then I can also change the brightness from there as well. And you can see I can get it to really quite a high level. It's quite a bright day here today, uh, and yet that's nice and clear. And if I wanted to start playing a video, I can tap on it. It is all touchscreen and just works like a tablet. I've also got a touchpad here on this Huawei phone. Um, but if I wanted to, I could add in a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. So we skip the ads, uh, and let's just uh, switch into... Oh, the volume's decent. It's actually quite loud. What volume is that on now? So that was on half volume. That's pretty loud actually. And it defaulted to coming through that. Uh, so if I go full screen and uh, I'm, I'm looking at it, it looks like it's already on 1080. Oh, it's on 720. I suppose with a small screen. Uh, so if we do advanced, uh, yeah, so we've got 216060, which that's switching into now. And that does look really nice. So we can call up these menus. Uh, I'm going to cover this phone a bit more uh, in a different video because I've, I've, I've had an idea about what I wanted to cover on it. 
but yeah it is it is a really impressive operating system and uh, and didn't cost me very much let's go in a bit closer so you can see it a bit better and uh, let's play one of my videos and so show, show you what it's like from an angle as well so let's skip the ad and we'll go full screen on that and so from an angle yeah it still holds on to it pretty well actually and if we try and get reasonably straight on to get an idea of quality it's nice and bright and the sound is definitely decent for the size of the monitor i mean obviously you can use bluetooth uh, if you want to but i was surprised at how loud it goes but yeah really nice from an angle so what came in the box so we had a cloth a card an instruction book a usb adapter usb a adapter uh, we've got a usb c to usb c cable so that's the sort of thing that i could use with the phone and it's a bit longer than one i've got and i've got an hdmi to hdmi mini and also a usb a to usb c cable as well so it should be all we need i like the fact that they've put a lip here so uh, instead of having the cable sticking out if you were to get the right adapter you would be able to make it not protrude from the side of the monitor which would be pretty cool now this is a micro usb to USB adapter uh, and I haven't got any mini HDMI's but you imagine if nothing was poking out that would be a really nice neat option and they are available you can get all sorts of things like this online so I plugged in my Pi 4 uh, you can see I've got power coming in here I've got HDMI going out to the monitor to provide the display uh, and I've also got USB C going to USB A which hopefully is going to power the monitor but also give me touch support so let's see what happens when I switch it on. So we should get some lights, we have, and it's powered the display. It should automatically switch to the right input, hopefully. Yeah, it said HDMI on the screen then, and you can see it's launching OpenFide, which is the open source version of FideOS. Now, because FideOS is based on Chrome OS, that it means it's got really good touchscreen support. So you can see that that cable that's powering the monitor is also supplying touchscreen as well. So yeah, all of that seems to be working absolutely fine. So if we launch YouTube, yeah, it's all come up and touchscreen support is great. Right, let's try some other operating systems on the Pi. So I plug loads of things into my eight gig Pi now um, and the Pi isn't able to power the monitor if you've got all sorts plugged in. So I've got my uh, Xbox controller adapter, I've got my mouse keyboard, I'm running an SSD drive, which uses a bit more power and I'm running the monitor and you can see it's flashing on and off with uh, with Lacquer. I don't know if Lacquer will work with TouchOS uh, as an operating system. It's kind of not at all designed for that, but you never know. Uh, so let's plug in another USB-C cable, uh, which will provide it some extra power uh, and should stop the uh, flashing on and off. Have I switched it on? Yeah, yeah, so straight away. So if you don't give it, give it enough power, uh, which is funny because, uh, you know, these mobile phones can power it, but the Pi, uh, only has a certain amount of power that can be run from those four USB ports and if you take too much from it that's what will happen so is this touch no it's not touch screen okay so let's try something else how about my build of KDE Plasma for the Raspberry Pi uh, so if we log in first of all and this is running at 1920 by 1080 so we would go to launch an app yeah, and uh, say for instance we wanted to launch Xmoto, which won't be a touchscreen game, but we can probably do most of the things that it requires apart from play the game, because it's not going to be a touchscreen game. There you go, so that's working. So what about my Mikotronics RK3599? Uh, well, this has got a pretty beefy power supply, so I don't think there's going to be any issue powering the display and there isn't so I guess it's no surprise that uh, Android would work well with touchscreen as it is a touch based OS and if we launch some apps uh, well let's go for something like Kodi and see if that works yeah we've got all the touchscreen support we want on that let's close that bit down and do a bit of Dolphin let's do a bit of Dave Mirror oh, of course I've got all the touchscreen controls on here as well so I could use it like a massive tablet well let's give that a go yeah, all the touchscreen is fine. Look at the size of the buttons. I'm going to use the controller though. Yeah, you can see that's running perfectly smooth. It's a nice fast monitor as well. No issues with that. 
I'll show my MacBook in a minute, but I'm just using it at the moment to write a vertical Android build because this monitor can be used in vertical mode as well. So I'll show that in a minute when this is finished writing. It's 128 gigs, so it's been taking a while. So the stand also works in vertical mode. So if you can see here, uh, you can get quite a lot in in vertical mode, so I quite like using it like that. Uh, you can see the MacBook is playing a game at the moment, but if I quit out of that, uh, we can then go to one desktop, and we can drag it over to the other. So it works very well with the Mac, and again, this is being powered by the Mac, just like it was with the phone. So I've just got one USB-C cable going into the monitor. So this is a preloaded multi-emulator system uh, from Arcade Punks. I've shown it in a previous video where I was using it in a handheld, and it works really well. Uh, and if I launch something on it, so for instance, there's pinball stuff on there if you like pinball games. So I've got my triggers and I've got my button and it really looks nice on this vertical screen. And let's try something else. All the official logos and everything looks really, really nice. So we can use select to insert a coin and start to start a game and just works exactly as it should. Really, really nice. Doesn't age as well as some of the other games. Bit of commando, which definitely works better in vertical. Really nice. And there's loads more on here, but I just wanted to try Pac-Man before I try something else. Yeah, definitely looking very nice in vertical. So really impressed. Um, just before I go through the specs, uh, I wanted to show that if you flip it up this way around, so you flip the stand all the way around, you could actually hang that up. So you could hang it up like a picture. Uh, so if you don't want to have to put up a proper mount, it's so light, there really is no weight to this at all, then you can have it just hanging up. So it's a 1080 Full HD IPS monitor, supports 10 point multi-touch with gestures. You've seen all the connectivity earlier on in the video. I've shown landscape and portrait mode. I do like the stand and it does feel nice and solid and second screen for gaming. Yeah, really like this monitor. So thanks very much to Ymaxit and Anderson for sending this to me uh, in exchange for a review. I really appreciate it and uh, I'll definitely be using it in the future. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.